Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Our project today is to fix some structural rust on the box of this dump truck. And I'll take you on a little tour. I really don't think the rust is too bad considering the age of this truck and what it's been used for, but I'll show you what's going on. So we got a, a spot rusted through here on both sides of the box and it's right where they put this kind of permanent mud flap on. And then you'll see these, these uprights here on the outside of the box. They're actually open at the top and so above the wheels, you know, they've gotten full of crap and they're, they're rusted through down here at the bottom. That one's a little bit worse. And then if you come back here on the back side, if you can see it, it's rusted through where it meets that outside apron. So we'll have to take and, and chip that off there and see about patching it. But the biggest problem is this right here is the main channel iron frame that runs underneath of the box. And it's a scissor type of a hoist. So you see the, the hoist mechanism right there with the links and it goes up underneath the box. Well, right about where that hoist frame attaches. See how those two channel irons are bowed apart like that? That's a phenomenon called rust jacking. So what's happened is that rust has gotten between these two channel irons. They're basically butted up against each other with the, the web against each other. And over 35 years, there's so much rust has packed in there that it's actually bent the frame and also bent this outside reinforcement. So we got to fix it. So I think what my game plan is going to be here is we'll just take the whole outside reinforcement off. We'll just cut it clear off and uh, see what's left of the of the frame rail behind it. And then if you look at the hoist arms, it's got a couple of rust holes in the bottom of the of the hoist arm there too. So I need to do something with that. So as far as the outside rust holes go, we'll just we'll knock the rust out of here and then we'll just plate this. And same with this through hole here. We'll just knock everything off that we can and we'll we'll put a patch over the outside of it. There's not a whole lot else we can do. And you know it's not a it's not a collector car or anything. This is a, an industrial machine, so there's no style points. It's just got to be functional. All right. So when it comes to rust removal, most important tool is the needle scaler. So the chipping hammer is better than an air hammer because the bit's actually indexed to the body, so you can turn the body and it turns the bit. Whereas with an air hammer, this is kind of free to spin. So that can be handy for certain things. Yeah, make sure you have ear protection. These things are loud. Yeah, didn't look that bad before, did it? Yeah, it was totally rotted out. So I can put my whole hand through from the bottom. But that's okay. This stuff is really thin. I'd be surprised if it's more than about 16 gauge or 14 gauge steel. So, kind of to be expected, I think. All right, we're going back together. These are the patches that I'm putting on these uprights. I'll try to show you how it works here. So this is the patch here. It's made from 12 gauge steel. And you know, I just cut them out with a cutoff wheel, made a paper template, traced them, cut them out, and then bent them over in the vise. You know, I don't have a lot of fabrication tools like a you know a shear or a break or anything, so I gotta do it all caveman style. But these just sit up here like so. And then I'll, what I've been doing is just tacking them here and here and then taking a big camp twist clamp and, and squeezing them at the back because if you look at this upright it's actually it's actually rounded on this surface but overall it's going pretty well I think you know it's hard to weld this dirty painted steel but we're getting there
Okay guys, time to get back to this dump truck. I got shipped off to the Motor City for a, a week of work up there, but now I'm back and we can finish up this project. So believe it or not, fixing the outside of the box was the easy part. So I've got everything welded back together, slight to coat of paint on it. It's not pretty, but it'll do the job. Now we gotta get into the real fun part, which is fixing this, this channel iron, and then fixing the, the scissor hoist as well. And you see right here, I've already roughed it up, but I don't think you're supposed to be able to put your hand through there. And then it's it's through on the bottom too. So we'll have to cut out a piece of plate and, and cover this up. This really isn't the end of the world. You know, all the stress is up here in the top of the beam. And then up here on this channel, you know, again, probably shouldn't be able to put your hand through it. So, yeah, we'll have to start cutting. It's not going to be fun. Yeah, check it out. That's a big old solid chunk of rust. Pretty crazy, huh? I think we lost a glove. Okay, everything is cut out and cleaned up. And I'm gonna try these, having these notches here, see if that makes for a little bit stronger weld. And then I've gotta patch this piece of angle iron, channel iron right here. It's a little bit rusty. And by a little bit, I mean I can put my hand through it. And then, even deeper notch back here so I'm gonna grab some lunch and then cut out the new pieces and we'll get her welded in I'm gonna do one whole side complete and then do the other side and then if you can see I welded this a piece of the old channel iron in there as a brace just to keep the box from from springing around on me and then I've got two pieces of wood under the front and there's also a steel prop on the other side so you know, I don't know how I'm going to die, but God help me, it's not going to be underneath of a rusty dump truck box. Okay, the new piece of channel is installed, and everything's been welded. I also welded it on the back side. I'm not going to put any kind of a fish plate on here. I, d I just don't think it's necessary. We got a, a nice weld, and like I said, it's welded on both sides. So, I think a fish plate's just asking for it to rust. But to that end, I'm going to go ahead and put a coat of primer on this channel 
before we install the outside beam just to give it a, a fighting chance. Alright, I think we've pretty well got her whipped. Everything is in place and welded up and it doesn't look too bad. Got the patch on the hoist arm and then I went ahead and added those little braces on here on the two channels that run out to the hoist arms. I don't think they're necessary but it had them before so I went ahead and replaced them. And then the big thing that you'll notice is that I changed the orientation of this outside beam. So I think it's a lot better to have it set up like this so you don't have that large surface area with line on line contact because you're just asking for rust and eventually rust jacking. That's why double frame trucks don't last very long in this area and you know older trucks around here that have a true double frame most of them are bound for the scrap yard because the, the frame rails will push apart so bad that they'll eventually crack and, and pull the pull the anchor bolts through and there's nothing you can do to fix them at that point you know it wouldn't be worth reframing a, a whole truck so you know rust kinda sucks but it's a fact of life around here anyway I'll throw some paint on it and then I gotta let the box down and do a little bit of welding all the way at the back where I couldn't reach but other than that I think we're done well there's the finished product it doesn't look too bad Okay guys, I don't know if you can hear, but the, the rain is just pouring down right now. We're supposed to get like three quarters of an inch of rain today, like 20 millimeters of rain. And the ground is frozen, you know, frozen solid. So when we get that kind of rain on top of the frost, usually there's a lot of flash flooding. And uh, I'm pretty close to the river, so that'll probably be coming up too. But we're nice and dry here in the shop. And I think we're going to call it done on this dump truck. Now I know. You guys can see in the video, you know, there's plenty of things on the bottom of that box that we could have fixed. You know, you could spend you could spend months working down there. It probably needs a floor, and you know, if you took the floor out, you probably find that some of the tops of the braces are bad too. You know, I don't know. I priced the material to replace the floor. It was like seven hundred dollars, and uh, the one that's in there is just not bad enough to to warrant fixing it. So we're gonna let it go. We fixed the important parts, which are those structural frame rails along the side. So I'd have to tally it up, but I think somewhere between 18 and 20 hours I spent uh, doing this job. So it's uh, it's not difficult. It's just really dirty and very time consuming. You gotta you gotta quit somewhere. So we're gonna quit here, and we're gonna call it good. And actually, I just had a visit from a couple fellas who are local to me and they made an offer on this truck and I accepted so I gotta fix a few things that are wrong with it but it's basically sold uh, the, the windshield wipers aren't working it's got air uh, pneumatic powered wipers I gotta fix that so that might be an adventure and then there's a couple of issues with the air brake system the low air pressure warning light is stuck on all the time so I have to fix that it'll fail a DOT inspection if the if the low air you know warning light and buzzer doesn't work correctly so no big deal I'll fix that maybe we'll make a couple videos out of it maybe not I don't know but uh, thanks for watching guys